What's up, guys? Zach Rand, Micro Profits XF. Just doing a quick video. Um, why is this still? There we go. All right. So basically, we're gonna do a little quick video. I know it's Thursday, and base well, basically Friday, according to the market. But uh, we'll just kind of quickly go through some things. See what we see. I don't think I'm gonna do any trading. Um, we'll see what we see though, real quick here. Let's we'll kind of go through it. You, that's that's interesting, intriguing. Got some support here. Let's go down. Ah, kind of broke through that trend line, though, didn't we? Yeah, we're kind of rejecting that one. Rejecting that one. Rejecting that one. Untested support. We're in a downtrend, obviously, for the five minutes. We got a higher low here. Lower low. Lower low. Higher low than that one, but as far as the tr the major trend according to the OPV, we are in over the MAs, so we are in a uptrend. But obviously, from the standpoint here, we have a lower uh, lower here, a higher low, and a higher low, and a lower high. And we're, but this is major support zone right where the blue line is basically so it's kind of hard to you know if it breaks through this untested support I would say it's a sell but as of right now I'm gonna stay out of it same thing with the euro nothing there it's kind of you know rejecting a little bit of that one kind of zoom out a little bit Not really creating too much of a lower. It's kind of uh, kind of in this channel right now, as you can kind of see, a little wedge there. So nothing drastic on that one. Let's look at stuff that we can see. Rejected that one. That's probably a good buy right there, probably, because we got a lower. Um, eh, actually, it's more of a wedge too, actually, but that is nothing. Okay, so moving on. Yeah, we kind of broke up with the trend line on this one, the Australian USD. Of course, the USD is kind of crazy, and then, and then an hour changes that. So, yeah, that's not. It'll probably come down and then go up again. So, I'm not going to enter that one just because looking at that. So, it'll probably go down. And then maybe tomorrow, but I know tomorrow they're gonna there's some major news, so that's why I'm not really trading the USD pairs right now because you just never know what's gonna happen with them. All right, continuing on, move forward. Next trades again. I don't trade any exotic pairs. It's usually minor and major. Is what I'm trading right now. I tried doing the exotic stuff, but the spread is freaking crazy, and they don't move as much, but. Oh, oh, let's look at this one. Pound in the Aussie again. Kind of broke out of that. Well, we got a wedge right here. So at 8 o'clock, when we form that new four-hour candle, it might be something to look at, maybe. Obviously, we have some verified test resistance right here. So, I mean, it could shoot up and test it again one more time and then bounce back, which is fine because that'll give us some pibs. If it breaks out of here, that'll give us a good 6,000 or so. Kind of look at the higher time frame. So, it is an uptrend for the daily, for the hourly. So, it's not a bad. Isn't too bad. Wouldn't be too bad of a trade, actually. But I think it's gonna. We have to see it break out of this trend line right here to see what it does. And then, uh, like I said, I wouldn't hold my breath and hope. I mean, it could go up there. I mean, obviously we're obviously the higher high, lower high, lower low, higher low, but the same. We tested that one time, but. And we're kind of shooting our way back up from this previous spot. We have a higher high from that one. And obviously a higher low from that one. 
and so on. So we'll to, maybe I'll check back and see where that's at. I'm at eight o'clock. Another one, British Canadian. Same thing. Obviously, we gotta you know as we go down, we're kind of looking at the time frames there. And you know, if it comes back maybe get in if it retraces but it looks like it's going to go pretty much up to here but it could bounce back to wedge and then finally shoot up i just don't know obviously i don't i'm not a i don't predict the future but obviously it did break through the ma's but it did right there too so it's kind of i don't know it's an interesting time i really don't like to trade on fridays or for that matter overnight but i do dabble every now and then obviously silver and gold isn't doing much all right, so that part's over. So now let's talk about, one thing I wanted to talk about is kind of like how I determine like as far as lot sizes and what I'm doing. Um, I try to risk, obviously when I started this, I only had $23.50. So it was, I was risking the lowest lot size that I could. So, um, and obviously if we take a look where I'm at now, um, after this week, I'm at $25.13. So $2,513.50 um, is where I'm at right now. And basically, so how do you determine? Like I said, when I started, I had $23.50. That's all I had. And I was risking 0 0.01 lot size. And I did that until I hit about, I think it was like 50 that nah, was probably about 100 bucks. And then I went to 0 0.2 lot. Oops. 0.2 lot sizes. Okay. And then I hit 200. Now, here's the deal, though. I mean, this is the, the shape part. Or not really the shape part. But you have to control your risk if you don't want to blow your account out. Especially when you're trading. If you, I recommend trading with more money. Um, it's because you can afford that part of it but um again i just wanted to see if it's possible which now it is possible i've proven that it's possible to start with 23 dollars 50 cents to get where i'm at right now um so that's been proven by me so that's pretty cool anyways i mean shit that's awesome but anyways so my theory is for every 100 dollars, i can probably risk an extra lot size basically and that's kind of where i'm at now so right now like i said i'm at 25 uh whatever it was so right now i'm going to risk 0.25 lot sizes um and the way i calculate or another way to calculate that is if i take 2500 let's say i, just, I try to make it even um times 0.05 percent of my account oops let me try that again so 2500 times 0 0.05 is 125 dollars that I'm risking. Okay. And usually most, I mean, most of my trades are going to be right around that ballpark for risk. It's 5%. It's really not that much. And, you know, I try to stick it around. So I divide that by, let's say, 300 pibs. And technically, I should be risking 41 lot sizes. But obviously, um, some of my trades go over oops that amount um because if you look recently my trades from yesterday let's look at my account history from yesterday alone i had uh some losses so uh, 61 dollars i knew that wasn't going to do much which i got out of there in time but obviously you know this one right here australian jpy it was in profit for a little bit but then it went back to 101 um, so again, my risk is 125. And obviously, this one is a loss, Yuradi. I mean, obviously, it was overnight. So when I woke up and looked at it, I'm like, oh shit, we're at 162. Um, actually, I think it was at 200 at one point. But then it, I see, I was kind of watching it, and then it went down to 162. And it's like, ah, I'm gonna call it a day. And then obviously, I got the positive ones from this one to make up for it, um, to cancel those out. And I ended up making an extra 100 and whatever it was dollars on top of the 300 loss that I had to incur from these three trades but that's just that's the way that you know it just goes that way it really is so um obviously again uh you know my deposit is 197 dollars and 85 cents in total so if i go to my custom period and i go all history all 
that's what it is. Because I've been trying to figure a way. And I didn't think it was possible, but it, it was. So like I said, back, I'm really, try this crap. Yeah, 2020, February. And this is where this comes in. So this is when I actually started trading this way. I used to have a whole, like a thousand more indicators in this. I've been doing it, trying all kinds of crazy crap. And nothing ever worked. It did work a little bit and then blah, blah, blah. And honestly, I could probably get rid of at least this one and this one. And all I need is the OPV and my trend lines and the support and resistance. That's all I need. I don't even need um, the bands on here either. I can probably delete that because I don't even use it. I don't even know why it's even on there actually because I think I was testing something and it just kind of saved to my template. So I can get rid of that. I don't even need that. I really don't. All I need is these trend lines and kind of see where the OPV on the trend actually is. That's all I need. I rarely, rarely use these divergence unless i'm looking at a smaller time frame to kind of get in if i have time to look at it and then i will like right now we have divergence on the macd and as you kind of can see it's going down and obviously we have a bullish divergence down here in the rsi but that's a little bit further back which it went up but it's matching up with the trend line so yeah it's probably a good time to buy right there obviously hit that trend line now we have divergence right there so it's probably a good time to sell but these are just small i mean if i enter here and go there i have to close there and if I sell here, then I have to close pretty much down here. So it's kind of, I'd rather do the t higher time frames, which these really don't match up on. So honestly, I could probably get rid of all these. I could, the only thing I need is the trend lines and support and then my MAs that I use for just to kind of determine the trend and the OPV. That's really all you need. But again, going back to calculating lot sizes, that's kind of how you determine it. So again, if you're starting only with $23.50, you really don't have much to work on because if you take that times 0.05 percent of the account and that's aggressive whoop, actually i didn't do that right 2350 times 0 0.05 so dollar 17 is all you can risk which is pretty much 117 pips call it luck call it whatever it is i'm not saying i'm the greatest trade in the world i don't think i am i really don't but something's working for me either whether it be luck or whatever the case may be it, it's working so i'm gonna stick to it and that's just kind of what i've been doing i mean like i said i recommend probably starting with a little bit more maybe i got lucky in my first few trades to build capital maybe i don't know but obviously i lost a lot too like i said i've been trying three or four deposits of twenty dollars ten dollars ten dollars twenty dollars 140 dollars but again, I wasn't using this system how I am using it now. I was using different indicators. I think it was, let's look real quick. Look at my templates. I have it saved somewhere. Oops. Just so you guys can really see what I was, I think it was the this one. This is the one I was probably, yep, this is uh, similar. No, not really. Give me one, two. And no, it wasn't that one. This one, this is the one I was using. One of the many. So I had the channel, had the MAs, I had whatever the ADX, I had the eye trend. So when it crossed it, and this is the one I was using, I was pretty much using this channel indicator, which obviously doesn't work, notably. I mean, it did a little bit, but not 100% like the actual trend line shows, pretty much, which is like maybe 70% chance, but. Anyways, and then of course before that, then I had like all these. I have all kinds of. I had this one. I tried um, just doing resistance and support, which actually wasn't too bad. But again, I didn't stick to it. I mean, there's a million different ways to come on trade this is another one that i use actually quite a bit it takes a while to load just because it's all freaking crazy but this is one that i found and it, again but it didn't really it's based off the uh, you know you kind of follow the trend here and then obviously when this is oversold or overbought or whatever then you and it matches up with that then you buy but the one thing i did notice it kind of changes so like right here this arrow it'd be right here and it'd be pointing that way and then as it continues to go down then it changes so you just i don't know 
there's just so many other different stuff out there that just doesn't work and I'm trying to and that's when I realized I needed to really focus on studying and doing what I'm doing right now so I'm not here to blow smoke up anybody's ass I'm not here to sell you anything well, I'm just here to teach cuz I've been through it it sucks I've been I'm trying to I'm been trying to crack this fucking thing for years and wasted thousands of dollars no joke um and I mean, shit, if you think this is, I, I can't log in, I forgot my password, but if I log into my other account, it would say probably negative 2,000 that I put into that one. And then if I logged into all my other previous ones, it would probably say another two, three, four, five thousand $5,000 over the years that I've been trying to crack this shit. So eventually I just got tired of it and kind of said, you know what, there's got to be a simple way. Studied my ass off, did a lot of free research, YouTube, Google, um, Amazon Kindle, did a 30 month subscription, read a lot of books kind of look to see what all people you know i looked for things that were in common what everybody was kind of pointing to and that's what it is i tried you know i read a lot of the naked forex trading which is just trading candles nothing at all on here just your basic trading and using candles like i've read that like right here for example i did i remember reading up and i did try this but i didn't stick to it um like right here there's, see how there's a big gap right here and there's a big candle usually this means that there's going to be a buy i mean it'll be a little bit of a tracement so you take your put your buy right here in the next candle um when it opens above once it engulfs all the last ones pretty much and there's a little bit of a gap and then you put your stop loss at the previous low and then you would buy which obviously that would have been a good opportunity um but again obviously right here you know it doesn't really engulf it kind of matches that once so you wouldn't do that and it just it's hard you the profits are slower that way and i'm not saying that i'm impatient and i want to get rich now but i'm just looking at simpler ways and kind of want to make some money and this is how i'm doing it and basically the best way to figure out this is a very important is trying to figure out when is it time to i know this is gonna be a long video and i'm kind of just dragging it out and talking so what should your take profit be that's a good question um obviously again if you're following the trend line so right here if you were to buy kind of in this you know support area you'd probably want to take profit at the resistant area that's true but that always doesn't happen so again so when i was trading when i had 23 dollars 50 cents i really didn't think about it but once i got to a hundred dollars i was like okay so next week i want to try and double this so i want to make 200 okay which i had to make 100 so what's the best way to do that? So I take 100 divided by 5. $20. So I have to make $20 a day to double my account. Okay? $20 a day. That's it. And this is how I determine it. So now, so after the first month of trading, I calculated it, and I earned seven times what my account was. Okay? Okay? So $23.50 times, oops, I didn't do that right, times uh, 164, something like that. So again, if we look at my account, custom period, so I started on, oops, February, let's just go first, to March 1st, $185 or 161 is my profit. Okay. 161. Take $23.50 times 7 equals 164. So a little bit off, but you know, whatever. That's basically what it is. So if I take 164 times 7, $1,151. So that was my goal for this month. $1,151. Okay. So I take that and I divide it by four weeks equals $287 a week divided by $5. That equals $57.57 that I have to make per day to meet my goal. Okay. So now let's watch this. So if I take March 1st, to where we're at right now, 
and the 26th. $2,189. Okay, so if, again, if I take this times five, $287 times four, my goal for this month was $1,151. I'm at $2,189. That's $1,037 more than what I even shot for. That's pretty crazy. Because, again, if you look at the track record of my like $56, $57, $58, and yeah, and obviously it adds up $131, $100. Because like, a lot of, if you look at the dates, if they're grouped in the same date, I close them all out. I don't hang on to one. Like this one, for example, it was part of the March 19th group. It's only $1.20. This one is 91 cents. I closed it out because it, it way I surpassed my goal. And I was like, I'm done closing all of them. You know, why hang on to something if it's if you don't know? That's the whole point. And I think that's where people fail because they want to they want. And again, obviously, I've built enough capital so I can have more. Obviously, when you're starting, if you have a little capital, you're going to have to be very, very, very careful and make sure you're precise in your trades. You will. Because that's, again, whether I'm lucky or not when I did it that way, I have no idea. I just followed this and hang on, I guess. Maybe I was lucky. But if you can start with at least 100 to 250 and you have a good um, uh, leverage, like I have 1 to 500, you should be fine and you'll be able to build that whether you get losses or not. Because I get losses, I get gains. That's how it works. And negative 100. And obviously, a couple of days there, yesterday, I have negative a couple, two negative 100. So I was negative $326. But then after today, when I closed my positives, I was up $137 or whatever it was. So I made that money back plus I got $100. So I think that's the best way to determine. You got to set a goal. And then after you have your major goal for the month, you have to make a little goal for the week and then you have to make a little goal for your daily goals i mean that's kind of because not every, you're not going to have a trade every day so if you can surpass so if you were again so again my goal is 287 a week right i think whatever and divide that by five so it was like 57 dollars a day if i surpass that in trading i'm at like 100 and something then set all your stop losses to where it would equal to be 57 and then take, put your take profits to where the next line or whatever it is. And if you make more, you make more. That's just how it works. Or if, you know, if you're going to go to bed, then I would close your trades. But if you're way over your, your profit, profits. But if it's in like the morning and you're already at that, then ride it out a little bit and see what happens. That's kind of what I do. Um, so it's pretty crazy. Like I said, I'm way past stupid. I don't understand it myself. I'm trying to comprehend it. Like I said, I don't think I'm the world's greatest trader obviously because that's impossible because i'm up like what is it like a last month it was uh whatever percentage Trying to look this up real quick. Okay, so so I do have a. I'm on the signal start. You guys ever heard of it? I'm not gonna post it now because I'm trying to gain my gains on it, anyways. Because right now it shows that I have like a negative because I do. Um, on this account that I'm trading right now, which was because of my previous startups that I've been trying to do to prove this, it's been it, it shows me I have, I have a negative gain of 88.74%, but I have a profit of 2,315. Um, but, anyways, um, so March, or not March, but February, my gains were 635%, and this month I'm 1,242.75% is my gains. 
Um, again, it's only two months that I've been doing this. Obviously, I have two more days starting next week. Um, I'm not going to... I might be watching that one trade, I guess. Where were we at? What were we watching? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So, I might watch this one, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do. But anyways, guys, that's kind of basically, like I said, you got to set goals. Minimum goals. High goals. Break them down. And trade that. Okay? Don't try to be greedy. Expect the losses. They're going to happen. I recommend trading a live account. I don't, try, you know, demo accounts, they're nice. I've tried it, but you don't get that feeling. And plus, I think demo accounts are kind of weird because I did try demo accounts a couple times and, like, it didn't. Like, when, as soon as I switched to a live, like, everything changed. Like, the whole charts, it seemed to, like, didn't even match what was going on with the demos. So, I was really confused. So, it's better to just to start with, to start with if you, even if you have $1,000, start trading with .001, the minimum lot size. So you get the emotions of loss and don't sit there and hold it forever. Take it a loss and move on and go to the next one. And don't get too emotional about it and think that, oh, I have to make it. I have to do this. No, it's not how that works. The big ones will come. Okay. I've experienced it. I've done it myself. I was negative. Like that one time I like, I blew half my account. I'm like, fuck, I have to get into a trade. I'm like, wait, no time out. Think, look for due, follow the due diligence, follow your plan and the next thing I know, I made back what I lost, and plus I made profit. So you have to be patient. Keep it simple. You're going to have losses. This isn't always going to work. The market is going to do what it wants. There's no 100% proof way of trading. There's no 100% all trades are always right. Okay? Expect that. Just deal with that. Okay? So thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Michael Puff FX out.